What's going on guys? Brandon Ross, your Chevy Source here again. I know it's been a long time since I had the last upload. Um, been waiting for this to come in. Our dealership has been. Uh, this vehicle, we've had a couple come in now. They've only lasted a couple days, so I haven't even had a chance to do a video on them, uh, any kind of review or anything like that. But as far as appeal factor goes, um, looks, performance and everything, I do think this is gonna be the nicest one that we have yet. Uh, let's take a look at it. Here is the 2021 Chevy Tahoe. Uh, this in particular right there is the Z71 package. Um, like I said, we had a couple come in. We did have the highest trim level one, the high country, and then the second down from that, the Premier. Um, I just sold the Premier just the other day on Saturday. Uh, came in our lot Friday and got PDI right away. So like I said, I didn't have any kind of time to do any kind of review on it. Um, but as I said before, appearance wise, I do believe this is the nicest one we had left. Um, with the Z71 right here from the very front end, you can see Z71 package gives you a whole different type of bumper. It gives you more ground clearance and departure angles. Um, just like a Z71 in a Silverado, Colorado, um, Canyon, Sierra for your GMCs. Um, you do get skid plates underneath. Um, just like in the Colorado ZR2, you got a different front end, just like this one, um, to give you that better uh, approach angle. Um, that way when you truly are off-roading, you're not going to scrape anything with rocks or what have you. And all new for the 2021 Tahoes and Suburbans, um, completely redesigned in the interior and exterior. The front end, obviously you can see, definitely doesn't look like your traditional Tahoe or Suburban that you've been seeing driving on the road. Um, they did mimic the appearance of the new Silverados. Um, whole front end just got a complete redesign. You will have this running daytime light right here as well as this air vent um, looks just like on the Silverados. Some red utility hooks always looks good, especially on a black on black vehicle with the black bow tie going across. Black running boards, black and machine uh, finished wheels. Just all black around. I think it looks amazing. The biggest thing I think a lot of people are gonna appreciate with the new Tahoe and Suburban is the suspension change, especially in the rear. Um, it is an independent rear suspension now. It's gonna give you a lot smoother ride um, than previously and before. It's still like a truck, but it's gonna ride a lot smoother, maybe more like a Traverse or your more traditional third row crossover SUV type vehicles. Hard to really see the window sticker right now with the glare and the tinted glass, but I can kind of break it down. Uh, the main stuff that all the bells and whistles you're gonna get on this vehicle come with the Z71 signature package. Um, you get the panoramic sunroof, um, enhanced cooling radiator that's really going to be helpful for uh, heavy towing, long distance driving, keep the um, components cooler. Um, you get a trailer brake controller in case you are towing with that advanced trailering system, the HD surround vision, um, even a hitch view for when you are backing into your trailer hitch. Um, this is definitely going to be a vehicle that you're going to be able to tow with. Um, you also get the heated power seats in the first row and in the second row. Heated steering wheel. Um, you actually get a power telescopic steering wheel. Um, I know a lot of times you have to um, put down that little lever to raise and lower your steering wheel, pull it in and out. You actually do have a manual switch to do all that, or power switch rather to do all that. Um, when you're spending, as you can see here, MSRP on this, 65.7. When you're spending that kind of money, you want those nice little amenities there to really justify this. Some safety features on this vehicle now. You do have front and rear uh, pedestrian parking. Uh, alerts so whenever somebody's walking behind you if you're backing out of a grocery store or pulling into a spot if there's a pedestrian there or even just a car it's gonna let you know you have lane change alerts and blind spot monitoring as well as lane keep assist if you do have that on there is a button to turn that on and off for some people who do not, do not like it but essentially if you are merging into another lane without your turn signal on there are cameras on both sides of the vehicle that are going to be picking up the dotted lines on the highway first it will uh give you a seat alert in these tahos and Spermans. now you actually have the choice of whether or not you want it to beep at you like a traditional vehicle would or the seat will slightly vibrate to let you know that way it's not disturbing the rest of the passengers um it will first alert you that you're changing lanes without a turn signal on is that something you really want to do um, and then if you keep on going over that line it's actually going to nudge your steering wheel ever so slightly 
Um, it's not a huge jolt or anything. It may catch you off guard. Some people love it, some people don't. That's why Chevy does give you the option to turn it on or off. Uh, this C71 Tahoe we built, it does have your standard 5.3 liter V8. It is the Ecotec engine now. Um, we introduced that in the 2014 model years for mainly the trucks. Um, essentially what the Ecotec does is it will shut down cylinders. A lot of people are already familiar with that. Um, it used to only shut you down to four cylinders. In these bigger trucks, Silverados, Tahoe, Suburbans, again with the GMC models as well, um, it, they have perfected it now. It will shut down to two cylinders. Um, even in these big vehicles, fuel economy is everything nowadays. Um, so good example is if you're, you have cruise control on, you're not going up any kind of crazy hills or anything like that. Or if you're just going a downhill with your foot off the gas, that's probably the only really time it's gonna shut down two cylinders. It happens very little, um, but it is there. Um, it will shut down to four cylinders more often than not. Um, but that's what's gonna get you the better feel. A little bit more in the detail here. As you can see, there are the front parking sensors and the front pedestrian parking alerts right there as well, letting you know whenever you're getting close to something. As well as with it being a Z71, you always get the all-terrain tires. On this one, you have the Goodyear Wrangler Trail Runner all-terrains, 20-inch um, wheel tires. Like I said, it's like that uh, black gunmetal um, aluminum wheels. I think it goes perfectly with the color of this vehicle with the all black running boards right there, black badging, black emblems. And then you get that nice little touch of red there in the Z71 and the nice little touch red right here on the utility hooks as well. Next, I wanna direct your attention to the rear. Again, you do have more of the parking sensors as well, but biggest thing is you do have the power tailgate. That's pretty common in a lot of vehicles now, but what I do like is right here. So what you can do here now, because the Tahoe is a third row vehicle, you can now raise and lower the third row power I'll show you here on the right one. Folds right down. And the left one. Folds right down. The other down. cool feature is you can fold down the second row. If you don't have passengers, but you need a lot of space, whether you're going to Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy to get that gigantic Samsung TV, whatever it is, you can fold it down. Now watch this, I'll explain this to you. It's completely folded flat. That is good even whenever you have like the passenger of the driver's seat all the way back if you're a really tall person. Um, it is actually going to adjust for you. That way you don't get it caught. That was a big problem on previous Tahoes and other third row SUVs is that if you had the passenger driver's seat um, sat all the way back, you were kind of screwed. You had to adjust that seat first and then you could lower down the second row. But now I'll try it with that one too. It's gonna do it itself for you. It's gonna self correct. Look at that. Look at all the space you have in there. That was another big change too with the new Tahoe and Suburbans is now cargo space itself all around cabin space is a lot larger now. Um, in an older Tahoe, you probably had to like here and then back was all that is. Um, I believe they increased the cargo space with all the rows up another eight square inches or eight square feet. Um, giving you a lot more room because in a Tahoe, people were always complaining about how there was no space when the third row was up. Um, here, I'll even show you here a little bit better. I'm gonna get these third rows back up. But you can see what I mean here. Um, you can still kind of see the line. Like really that back was all you had. So you either had to take the plastic off to expose the hitch and put a basket on the back, or you had to throw stuff up on the roof um, cause you just didn't have that much space, especially if you had a full family taking up all the seats, there's a lot of luggage there. Well, now you have a lot more space, um, to utilize. Now let's take it over here to the second row. Um, this vehicle is equipped with Bose. As you can see right there, there's a bunch of Bose badging on all the speakers. Um, but with the second row down, if you need it up, all you have to do, and you're going to watch it self-correct again. There, pop that. And then this is to um, slide it back and forth, um, or if you just wanted it to go back down. But I'll try and do this with one hand. Now you can slide it back, have a little bit more leg room, or if you don't need it, there you go, folds right back down. So now sitting in the second row, I don't even have a seat all the way back, but I definitely have a lot of space. This one was made with the captain seats. Um, yeah, like I said, this is still new. Um, so I have a lot of the plastic in here, but there is a nice aisle to take you back to the third row. 
Third row occupants also do have a lot more leg room as well, even if the seats are all the way back. Um, bringing you right here, um, you do have heated seats for the second row, um, as well as the rear climate control. Again, that's pretty standard nowadays, um, but you can control the fan speed, temperature, the modes if you want, just your feet, your face and your feet, or just your face, doesn't matter. There is the three prong wall outlet right there as well. Two USB chargers right there, as well as USB chargers and cup holders for the third row. Um, a lot of times, third row occupants were definitely left out. There wasn't really much for them to do back there, but um, definitely they were not a second thought when Chevy was redesigning the new Tahoe. Now let's take a look at just the whole front, mainly the driver's side, but I'll show you some stuff on the passenger side too. Um, in the Z71, um, as you already saw, there is leather seating. There's also dual power seats for the driver and passenger. Uh, first switch, go back and forth, up and down. You have the recliner and you also do have a power lumbar support that will actually move up and down your back. It will go all the way up to, I believe this seam right here, all the way down to the bottom, um, especially for those long drives. It's really nice to have that extra space right there, um, extra mobility to make yourself comfortable on those long drives when your back starts hurting. You do have memory seats in case there is somebody else driving this vehicle. Um, all automatic windows, all four ways around, uh, window lock, in case you have kids or anybody in the back annoying you with the windows. Um, you do have power folding mirrors. You can press that button right there. Hello. Um, or we have it set too, to when you turn off the vehicle and you hit the lock button when you're walking away, it will power fold the mirrors or vice versa when you're walking up to the vehicle and you hit the unlock button, those mirrors will widen back out. I'll show you that. All right, all this information stuff over here, you do have an electronic parking brake now. Um, right here is the lane departure warning, lane keep assist. Like I said, if you don't like that, you can turn it off when the light's on. It means it's on, obviously, or you can turn it off if you don't like it. If you don't like the parking sensors, you can also turn them off. Um, but again, when the light is on, worst button ever. Never keep this on unless you absolutely like it. I don't like it. Um, what it is? What this is, is the auto start and stop feature. A lot of vehicles have this nowadays. Um, you can see it right there. What it is, is when you come to a complete stop, especially like at a red light or something, um, your engine will cut off. The second you take your foot off the brake, your engine does automatically come right back on before you even touch the gas pedal. Very responsive, it does work. It is supposed to save fuel um, because you are burning a little bit of fuel while idling at a red light. Um, a lot of people don't like it though. It really throws them off when their engine turns off and then comes back on. So turn that button off. You also can control the power outlets by turning it off right there, turning it on. All your different drive modes here, auto four by four, four high, four low, two wheel drive. If you do want to maximize fuel economy, just keep it in two wheel. Um, or if it starts to rain, snow, anything like that, you can put it right in the auto. Um, or if it's like really heavy snow or something, four high, four low. Um, you can control the brightness of the dash by pressing one of these buttons. Um, if it's late at night, your headlights are on, but the dash is way too bright, you can hit that button, dim it down just a little bit. Um, you do have the automatic headlights, it's already in the auto position. Um, rain, snow, fog, anything like that, gets dark out, it, your headlights are automatically gonna come on. You have your brake controller right there. All your cruise control buttons are right here to turn it on, you hit that right button. Um, cancel at any time. If you wanna set your speed, first you hit the set button, you go down, and then you can adjust it however you want. This button right here is to adjust the gap depth right here. As you see, it goes down um, from your furthest middle to your closest. Um, that is for the front collision monitoring and front brake assist. It is also for the adaptive cruise control too. So say you have your speed on cruise control set to 65, you're cruising down the highway, person in front of you, if you're in the right lane, is doing 58. Um, whatever distance you have set to that vehicle in front of you, it is going to adjust your speed accordingly. So realistically, you're probably doing like 55. So you're not riding their ass. Or if you went to like the closest, you'll probably be doing 57 while they're, they're, they're doing 58. It's up to you. Heated steering wheel, four air leather wrapped steering wheel. Um, over here are your voice command buttons. Uh, if you want to place a phone call or put in directions, anything like that, you hit that button right there. Uh, if you want to hang up a phone call or reject a phone call, hit that button right there.
this little wheel right here is going to tell you a lot of information about your vehicle. Um, if you scroll up or down, let me get this to focus in real quick. All right, so you have your digital speedometer up right now. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see trip one and two. You'll be able to see fuel range by how many miles you have left. Oil life, tire pressure. You do have sensors in all four tires to let you know when you go low. Uh, oil, or not oil filter, air filter life brake pad life and driver assistance this is just going to let you know how far away you are or what side of the lanes you're on I'll bring your attention over here towards the center cluster here i think it's a very clean design um chevy did a good job the one thing i'm not too fond of is the buttons over here i actually just delivered a gmc acadia a couple weeks ago and they're starting to go to this button system um the new ca corvettes are kind of like this they're just positioned in a different spot the acadia was right here uh, the Corvette was like right along here. Um, but essentially you push the P button to put yourself in uh, park, um, pull on the reverse to put it in reverse, push it to put in the neutral, pull to put in the drive, and then you have your low gears right here, just like you would on a normal stock. All new for 2021, a 12 and a half inch screen. Very responsive. Um, audio obviously takes you into all your different radio settings. You have AM, FM, Sirius XM radio. Um, if you hit the home button right here, it takes you right back to the same screen phone. It's going to pair up your Bluetooth right there. See contacts, messages, phone logs, all that stuff. You do have Wi-Fi in this vehicle now. Pretty nice to have. You can switch the users right there. Um, so what you'll be able to do is it'll save seat settings, um, just all around settings in the, um, car itself. Um, if you like, like the folding mirrors, if you like it for your settings, you can set it like that. Um, you do have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto now. I can't tell you how huge that is. The only other vehicle that we have right now that has it is the Trailblazer that came out. Um, check out my other video. I had a Trailblazer in there while I was doing a couple other things. Um, but instead of you having to plug in your phone with one of these USB ports right here, you can now just pair up your phone like you will bluetooth and it's going to ask you if you want to enable apple carplay or android auto depending on what kind of phone you have uh me i have a new iphone i would use apple carplay um literally will project everything on my screen on my phone to this screen right here uh that way i can use apple maps google maps ways itunes um whatever you want to use um this because this one in particular is tahoe doesn't have built-in navigation just we didn't build it like that um, that way you can just use the navigation on your phone. Don't have to actually have to look at your phone. You can set your phone on the wireless charging pad that has increased size dramatically. My whole hand fits in there. Um, and my phone has plenty of space. There's a lot of other car manufacturers that haven't done this yet. Um, we actually used to put it right here, but it's not that wide. It's maybe three inches wide, but a lot of phones, the larger Samsung phones, the larger iPhones, um, they are wider than this, so you couldn't use it. So they decided to switch it, make it a little bit bigger. Um, I think someone who's behind that right now is Ford. Uh, the new Expeditions and Explorers don't have a wireless pad this big, so we're ahead of the game. Like I said, uh, when I was going over the window sticker, um, you have the upgraded trailering package in here. There actually is a button to go into it. You press that. Um, once you hook up a uh, trailer to uh, the hookups in the back, it's going to give you a lot of information. Your vehicle is actually going to run a diagnostics check on your trailer. Make sure brakes are okay, lights are okay, everything's working. Um, and then from there, you're going to be able to control the trailer braking, all that. Again, like I said, very responsive. If you scroll over, um, you do have an app center. You can download some more apps like um, Pandora, stuff like that. OnStar services. Obviously, this is a Chevy. You get OnStar. My Chevrolet app climate if you just want to go in here instead you can control the heated seats uh the temperature you do have dual climate control so your passenger over on the right hand side can control their own temperature um especially if you have a fiance like mine we fight over the temperature all the time um you can also control the rear temp from back here too and you can also lock them out as well um if you want to lock them out right there um that way if you have kids back there that are just messing around or can't agree on the fan speed the temperature what have you you can put an end cool that. thing i like is too you also have the extra camera upgrade here hit the camera button like i said there is your 360 camera view very very high quality camera there as well as a backup camera um you can see back right there front 
you can see right above you. Maybe if there's a curb right there and you want to see how close you're truly getting, you can see the trailer, the hitch camera that's pointing straight down at your hitch. And you can also, if you just want to see the straight backup camera, you can turn off this, the 360. It just kind of gives you like a split screen view of it, but you can turn that off as well. And then you can also just see the front or the back camera at a full screen view. It's up to you really. And then you have the center console right here, little button right there you press, comes open. Some more USB ports right here, uh, SD card slot. You do have a little tray right here to put smaller things in if you want to. You can remove it. You have a pretty deep chest, um, just like the same size as the Silverados. They carried over the Tyler and Suburban with a little rubber mat down at the bottom. You do as well have a panoramic sunroof for you and your passengers. I think this is amazing. My next vehicle I'm getting has to have this. Um, you can control the shade from right here. Pull it to bring the shade back. Or you push it in to bring the shade back out. You can also control the tailgate from right here. You have max three quarters and off. What max is gonna do is take it a little bit above the roof line, um, almost like a 45 degree angle. If you change it to three quarters, it's gonna be almost in line with the roof. So if you press that button, you'll see all the way back there, tailgate's coming up. And if you just want to press it again, tilt it go back down. You can also control the third row seats from back here. Um, press this button, seat folds down, press the other button, I'll do the other one. There you go. That way you don't have to go all the way to the back to press that switch. You can do it right from here and then get out. Go so like I said, um, Big drawback I didn't like was the whole shifting button there, but I'm assuming most vehicles are going to this, so it's kind of just, you have to get used to it really. Um, like I said, I'm not a big fan of it, but that's okay. The other thing I'm not a fan of is just, so with the engine choices, um, you do have the 5.3, like I said, you also do have the 6.2 liter V8. It's an upgraded engine option for like the high country and the Premier. Um, there is now also, they brought out the Duramax diesel they, they brought it out for 2020 model year, 3.0 inline six Duramax diesel engine for the Silverados. Um, and for 2021, they offer it now on the Tahoe and Suburbans. One problem, this is the Z71 package. This is your off-roading package here. Um, a lot of manufacturers, including us, we usually have a diesel option for your off-roader. The um, Duramax ZR2 Colorado, whether it's just the regular ZR2 or the ZR2 Bison comes in a Duramax. Um, you can also get it in the Silverado Trail Boss. Problem here is this is the one trim level you cannot get the Duramax engine on. You can only get the 5.3, or I believe you can get the 6.2, but you can't get the Duramax in just this trim level. You can get it in every other trim level. Um, why Chevy is not offering the Duramax diesel in the off-road trim package is beyond me. Other than that, I love the vehicle. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, that's the 2021 Tahoe for you. We haven't gotten any Suburbans yet. Um, when we get one in, if we still have a 21 Tahoe available, I'll try and get two side by side next to each other so you can see the size difference. Um, like I said, both in the Tahoe and the Suburban, they've made them bigger. Um, so there is more cargo space while you have the third row up. Um, but it's always nice to do a side by side comparison. So by all means, I will. If you like this video, um, you like the information I gave you. If you're just like looking at the thing, I think it's a gorgeous vehicle. I think Chevy did a very good job. Um, please put a like up in the video. Um, comment anything you do like or don't like about it. Um, I'm open to all years. Uh, I want to hear the criticism, what you guys have to think. What do you think Chevy did wrong? What do you think they did right? Um, I already gave you my opinions. I don't like the shifter. I don't like the engine thing with the Z71. They think they should have put a Duramax in it, but um, that's about my pick. Let me know if there's any other vehicles um, that Chevy offers that you'd want me to do a review on. By all means, I'll get some keys. I'll get my hands on one. I'll do it for you. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, leave a like down below. Subscribe to my channel. Comment anything you want to talk about or what you want to see, and I will help you out. Uh, like I said, this is Chevy Source, Brandon Ross here at Turner Chevrolet under the big American flag right off of 83. Um, other than that, guys, that's it. I'm out. Have a good one.